Tim Norris here. Dick M. Norris. Emily Norris. Carmen Norris. And this is the Grey Elephant Gaming Halloween Special. We have a lot of fun around this season. There's lots of activities and games that can tie into it, and so we thought we'd share with you. What? Oh my god! What are we gonna do? Fan Society? Welcome to the Phantom Society. This is a game where you get to play as either ghosts or ghost hunters. Jake and I are the ghosts, and our sole purpose in this game is to cause as much damage as possible to the mansion before being discovered by the ghost hunters, Carmen and Emily. To set this game up, in turn, the, a hunter and then a ghost will place a room tile somewhere within the mansion. Emily's a ghost hunter, she just placed her room tile. I, being a ghost, now get to place a tile of my own. After that, the ghost hunters must close their eyes while the ghosts secretly place one of their two ghosts underneath a room tile of their choice that matches the color of their ghost. For instance, I have a green ghost, I have to place him underneath a green room tile. After that, you want to make sure you write down your room number so you don't forget where your ghost is. The ghost then will start tearing up the rooms that are adjacent to them. Notice we just removed a tile. Ah, but then, inadvertently, the ghost hunters will cause damage as well. Three ghosts have been discovered. And if you notice, there's not many room tiles in the ghost hunters pile, while the ghosts have caused a lot of damage. Can the ghost hunters pull out a win here by discovering the fourth and final ghost? Yes, they do! Okay, alright, well thank you. We'll see you then. Alright, bye. Hey honey, uh, supposedly the Phantom Society's busy, but I called a phone number in the book. Guess these guys are a couple of real pros. This is what the game would look at the start. Each player has four good blue-spirited ghosts and four evil yellow-spirited ghosts, and in turn, each player will advance one towards their opponent. You're hoping to capture all four of your opponent's good-spirited ghosts and win the game, or advance one of your blue-spirited ghosts through one of the two doorways on your opponent's side of the board. However, be careful. If you capture all four of your opponent's yellow-spirited ghosts, you lose the game. Here Emily has captured my last blue spirited ghost thus winning the game. Great job, Boo Boo! You get a high five! Somebody say party? <laughs> Midnight Party is a family favorite. It's Hugo the Ghost's birthday party. The fun begins when the guests choose where to start on the board. Players then try to roll the number of spaces so that one of their pieces lands in the doorway of a room in which they can hide from Hugo. Watch us play as Emily and Jake successfully move guests into rooms. Tim has to move Hugo. And Carmen moves a guest who can't make it into a room, so stays in the hallway. When Hugo is on the stairs, he moves up one space. In the hallway, Hugo moves three spaces and captures any guests he encounters. Sorry, 
one guest per room. The score for the round is determined by your placement on the board. Guests who were captured first have the least number of points. Our favorite part of the game is moving Hugo and making spooky noises. Guys, it's a game. The Little Devils is a fantastic card game. First, deal out all the cards evenly amongst the players. Next, the starting player is going to place a card on the table that has a numeric value. The next player is then going to determine whether all players have to go higher or lower. Whoever is the highest or the lowest is forced to take the trick, as you can see, and it is not a good thing because you're wanting to get rid of all the devils as possible. I just now played a 22. Carmen is going to decide to go higher or lower. She played a 23, which is going to force Emily to have to go higher than a 22 as well. She's going to be forced to take this trick, so she plays a card that has no devils on it. Smart move, boo-boo. This is the last trick of the game. Carmen played a 27, oh, and Emily played a 25. Count up all the devils on your card at the end of each round. Once a certain number is hit in the game, the game is over. And in this game, whoever has the lowest score wins. That's right, baby. I pulled it out. Time for jack o -lanterns. And there's only one way to really carve a pumpkin. The power oh, yeah. tools. Yeah! Carve that pumpkin! Go ahead and pop the top off of it, Emily. What is that? <gasps> it's Ghost Splits! In Ghost Blitz, Baldwin the Ghost needs help capturing objects that either match the item and color on the card, such as this white ghost on this one. Carmen was able to capture the white ghost, thus she gains the card, plus any card from any other player who chose the wrong object. There's a total of five objects, a green bottle, a white ghost, a red chair, a blue book, and a gray mouse. Ah, uh, Tim's decided and he's got it. There's green on the card, so it can't be the bottle, can't be white, and it can't be the chair. It also can't be the book because the book on the chair wasn't blue. So it had to be the gray mouse. It's either objects that appear, such as the white ghost in full, or objects that just simply aren't there. Then the next card will be flipped and everybody makes a mad scramble and as you can see we have an awful lot of fun with this game. It's very challenging. And when the last card is taken, the game is over. Everybody at that point in time should take all their cards and start counting them up and see who had gotten the most cards to win the game. In this case, we all decided we're equally awesome, so we all win. You guys are early. Hold on. Okay. For you. For you. 
you. Have fun. What did you get? I got a bunch of bananas. What did you get? I got a game. Cool. <laughs> In Trick or Treat, players are moving from door to door in order to collect cards with candy on them to turn in to collect points. But not all houses have candy, some have tricks that you can play on your opponents. Going to the carnival will allow you to select any of the cards to the right of it. But there's also a haunted house where you can get fear, a mansion where you can get lots of candy, and also an alley where the bully hangs out. Emily has enough to be able to complete this card. So she turns in them cards to the discard pile, placing the set card in front of her. She's going to score them points later. Whenever you can't replace one of the set cards, the game is over, and everybody then is going to take all of their cards, adding up all the points on the bottom of them. Whoever has the most points wins! This game is a lot of fun, and we highly recommend it for anybody with kids. In King of Tokyo, you are trying to become the biggest, baddest monster around. You roll the dice up to three times, either trying to collect sets of numbers, hearts, claws, or lightning bolts. Lightning bolts allow you to accumulate energy cubes. Claws allow you to smack your opponents around, thus draining them of their life. Hearts allow you to heal. Energy cubes can be turned in to purchase cards to upgrade your monster. Take the amount of cubes, put them in the discard pile, taking the card, placing it in front of you showing that you have purchased it. You could even purchase some cute little costumes. I'm a princess. Carmen's a cheerleader, and you can place them on the base of your character like we have done, or you can leave them laying down in front of you. Dance around, Carmen! You win by either collecting 20 star points, or by defeating all of the other monsters, reducing their life to zero. Only then can you become the King of Tokyo. This game is a lot of fun, and we highly recommend it. It's one of our number one family games. Hope you enjoyed the Grey Elephant Gaming Halloween Special! Happy, Happy Halloween! Halloween.